the most Googled man on earth finally gets an interview with the BBC. Who am I talking about? Talking about Andrew Tate. Controversial influencer, Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. We did an interview with him uh, before he got surprisingly arrested and thrown in jail for four months. But uh, anyway, make a long story short, while he's in jail, according to the news here, over 29 assets, including 15 sports cars and 14 luxury watches, according to a statement from the Romanian Asset Recovery Management Agency, was confiscated from his property. And now from his first interview done after being released from prison and now currently on home arrest, he does an interview with BBC. How did it do? Let's take a look at this. I'm sure there'd be some surprising conversation back and forth because he's not a guy to be bullied. Pretty sure he's pretty pissed, but uh, let's see his demeanor here, Andrew Tate, on the BBC interview. Check this out. It's a massive shame that the BBC come here and try and push and purport this idea that I'm a dangerous person. I'm, I'm anti. I'm, I'm anti-drugs. So I've never pu pushed drugs or any, uh, I'm anti-drugs, I'm anti-violence. The UK is facing a knife crime epidemic and they're well, gonna sit here and say, they're gonna sit here and say that I'm the most dangerous man in the UK. You have said you're the most dangerous man in the world. I've said I'm the most dangerous man in the world. All right, it's already starting. First 20 seconds of this interview is already starting off pretty tough. I mean, look at the body language of the interview from the BBC. I'm not even seeing that she's put herself together, her hair still in a bun. I'm not so sure what type of interview is supposed to be. It was just supposed to be something that uh, uh, exposes what's going on in Romania uh, illegitimately with them uh, charging a Tate with these type of crimes based on Tate's understanding of what's being charged against him. That's illegitimate, that uh, uh, these are false. These are false claims. He's been released. Instead, the position of this reporter from the BBC is already animalistic. By the way, I've just noticed uh, every time I see Tate, he's always got this, uh, this, uh, you guys know what this is? What does this mean? Is this uh, like some Illuminati stuff? By the way, good guy. I uh, had a great conversation with him. A lot of the things that, uh, I, as you get to know the guy, uh, you know, my CEO uh, mentor, uh, Patrick, had a four or five hour podcast with him completely different dynamic than what's going on with that podcast versus what you see here on this BBC interview for the first 20 seconds. You've also said that a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner. I'm glad you find that funny. I find it funny that you're sitting here saying that I've said I'm the most dangerous man in the world and, you're, and you believe that's... When did I say that? I'm asking if you believe it. No, you said, you said, you said you're the most dangerous man in the world. Is that some kind of proof that I'm dangerous? Am I Dr. Evil now? I'm telling you that it's very upsetting that you're gonna sit here and that certain organizations in the world are gonna try and pretend that I'm the biggest force of evil on earth when I'm genuinely I'm a force for good. You have said. I'm genuinely a force Not for good. And the, and the reason they're doing this is because of the massive influence I have over the youth. And they don't like that I'm telling the youth to think outside of the matrix and ignore things like the BBC, which come here with loaded questions and false narratives and try and paint innocent people as, as, as guilty. You said women's intimate parts belong to their male parts. I said that if a woman marries a man, she takes his last name and traditionally the man gives her away. Okay, uh, Okay. first of all, the interview is really trying to corner him and put words in her mouth and looks like the way she's positioned these type of questions, she's trying to get a gotcha moment. Like, aha, I got you on camera, I got you on tape. She's basically taking what she sees online through TikToks, 30 seconds, 60 second reels, and trying to say, hey, this is what you said, trying to hold him to that. And we all know, all these different edits out there, and then you can clip, 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 where certain things may come out of his mouth out of context, and it sounds bad. I've been pushing traditional religious beliefs because I'm a religious man and traditional beliefs in regards to marriage, which everybody accepted 10 to 15 years ago. So what, that's not, why that's not, say? that's not a crazy conspiracy theory. If you're going to sit here and say that me believing a woman should take a man's last name in marriage makes me the most dangerous man in the world, then you're just going to lose your Yeah, forget about it, right? He's already lost. Exactly. Come on. If that's your point, if that's There's your point, you want to say that good luck. Should be to sleep with a lot of women outside marriage. That doesn't sound very religious. Or that's, very that's not what I said they should be able to. I said a lot of high value men, a lot of rich men do it. And then we discussed at length on podcasts why rich men do it. And we also discussed why women decide to be unfaithful. It's not a gendered argument. We discussed unfaithfulness as a whole. Both sides, what are okay. What the reasons and motivations for men and what are the reasons and motivations for women? Because you have no time to actually, you say because you have no time to actually watch my content, because you have no time to actually. By the way, it's so annoying. She's trying to tell him what he's saying. Like the person that, you're accusing that said these words he's sharing with you what he says but yet still you're not listening and she's still trying to shove what he said on a instagram piece of content down his throat and he's trying to clarify and she's not listening obviously they're trying to put him in a corner to get a gotcha moment watch my content at length 
and understand what I'm saying. You just come here with a small snippet, which we provided to you. Yeah, there it is. Doesn't make it true. No, completely. You don't have a clue what I say or what I talk about. You never watch my content. You have small you pieces of paper. Small you said on a piece of paper. Okay. To find That's so annoying. Things. And then you're going to say I'm the most dangerous man in the world. It's not an interview. This is an argument. Not me. Okay. Do you believe you I'm the most say. dangerous man in the world, Lucy? I'm not answering your questions. Well, then we well then we need to change the dynamic of this interview. Listen, that was just arrogant right there. I'm not answering your questions. Is is she superior? This is a conversation. This is an interview. When I'm doing an interview with somebody, it's a conversation. It's back and forth. She's obviously been told by by the BBC and, and, and what he calls legacy media, the, the mainstream media, that let's try to get something on this guy. So therefore, we have something of relevance to share in our news cycle for later on tonight or tomorrow. And it can hang. So we keep coming back to our media network to watch more content as these things unfold. I don't know. I allowed you into my home. I'm doing you a favor, giving you the first interview I'm giving to the public. You don't come here with a position of authority. You're not the police. Tell her. Tell her. I don't know you. You do not come here with a position of authority over me. We are equals. We are people. There you go. Good. Of the world. And we sit here as equals. And I see you as my equal. And if you ask me questions, I can ask you questions back. For you to come here and sit down and pretend you're the <laughs> and that you don't have to answer my questions is, is disingenuous <laughs> because I don't owe you. <laughs> this is a, that was a great response. To her positioning. This is how you don't get bullied. He didn't get mad. He get upset. He's controlled, self-controlled. He's explaining himself. He's articulating himself. Folks, listen, when you get into an argument with somebody, it's the person that's showing the most self-control. You as a man have a responsibility to use self-control. It's very easy to slip out of it. And I'm glad he's decided to keep it tight and uh, control himself in this moment. Because listen, I would have gotten upset at this, at this, at this moment. So, okay, salute. But I don't owe, no, you want. this is a conversation. And you I do don't conversation. owe you any degree of authority over right, So let's right. make that clear. And that doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or from the BBC or the CNN. I'm here you to answer your say. questions and be honest with you and do you a favor. Great. But, and I'm doing you a favor, but you come here with loaded questions. You're trying to paint a narrative of me, which is negative. I'm asking you and about that's fine. you said that people are concerned about. And that's fine. You but you're not going to sit here and say you This is a horrible interview so far. So... Just to put on the record then, you said that you've invited us into your house. Correct. We're here because you're under house arrest. Correct. If you were free to leave, we would have negotiated a more neutral setting. Don't you think as the BBC, it'd be very interesting to come here and discuss the fact that I was put in a dungeon for 92 days. Wow. And then locked in house arrest without charge. Don't you think yeah, that's ask that question. Conversation than old YouTube snippets? Don't you think that would be interesting? You're here under house arrest because there's an ongoing investigation into and human trafficking allegations against Correct. You. I've been incarcerated without charge. And don't you think do, it's well. been but dropped? Has been incarcerated before. Correct. So I am I'm a, I'm incarcerated without charge. And I think that'd be a far more interesting conversation than I guess Julia. She's not listening to him. She's just reading her notes. Look at her. Either, She's not so even listening to him. If you actually want She's preparing for her next move. You can talk about the fact without that listening. This man who has yet to be charged with a crime has had his liberty deprived of him. Listen, I've done a lot of interviews in my career. And I've got a certain script that I think I'm going to prepare the conversation about. But as soon as they say something, I take it off on that tangent. I'm listening because I'm using my active listening skills to take the conversation to a high level if it's meant for an actual interview. This is a, a law and order type of agenda right here where she's trying to get him in a moment where she can catch him and have whoever needs to get a clip of that on record for them to continue doing what they continue doing in a negative way. I think that would be a far more interesting angle than talking about me being the most dangerous man in the world because I own the car. And this question about schools being very worried about your influence. Yes. Boys in primary school or, you know, boys as young as 11 are quoting you at school, yeah. attacking girls, refusing to respect female teachers. Yeah. Would you like to say anything about that? I'd like to say a lot. Well, by the way, uh, apparently Andrew Tate has a large influence on younger males. So somewhat fairly decent question there. I am a positive force in the world. And I teach children discipline. I teach the world discipline, male or female, of any age. And a lot of women listen to me as well. 40% of the people who listen to me are actually female. Secondly, I do understand with my massive influence, and I am now the one of the most influential people on the planet, that I do have to be slightly more careful with things I say. I'm not going to disagree with that. The idea that I said something five years ago on a video that got 300 views. So what do you mean, being slightly more careful? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Some of the jokes I made four or five years ago on a YouTube channel that got 300 views, I would no longer make because Like I, what? Like... The OnlyFans joke, the one you mentioned, repeat, when she said, my man's car is my car. And then she said she did OnlyFans. And I said, what do you saw on OnlyFans? She said, my tits. And I said, well, those are your man's tits. As a joke, ha ha ha, everybody laughed. 
The point, the fact that I could do that on a podcast five years ago and only got 300 views, now I understand I'm the most influential man on the face of the planet. I would be more careful with certain things I say. That doesn't mean the things I originally said were genuinely out to harm people. Do you really believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Google person on the planet. Do you believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Google man on the planet. I think we're done. (laughs) (laughs) She's doing this, like she's angry. Like, does he owe her something? Like. I don't know, did, she, did he piss her off? Is something that I mean, were they dating before? Did he like cross one of her girlfriends or her sisters? The way she's approaching this as a professional journalist is out of character if you're actually doing journalism. She was there pissed off for a reason. I don't know why. And Tate's not getting bullied by it. Listen, when you're looking at where boys are at in school today, I said this on my podcast. It's crazy that in this world, it's okay for teachers to teach their kids in drag, but it's not okay for teachers to pray for the students in class. I don't get it. Is that radical? Is those values and principles something that's that's off? Don't get bullied because you think your values and principles of righteousness, having good character and nature is being attacked because those that have those values and principles, you are being attacked. Other people want you to be empathetic to their situation, but they can't be empathetic to your your decision to be conservative in your values and principles or grounded in the things that you believe in your moral character and what you have been raised in to be true. What we're experiencing today is not brand new. What we're experiencing today has transcended human history. And if you want to use values and principles, not just what they teach in schools or based on what's on social media today, you need to find the values and principles that allow you to transcend and skyrocket above and to be an influencer for good based on what's going on in society today. That being said, crazy interview here with the BBC. They had an opportunity to do some something awesome, but they didn't. They blew it and they're getting more negative attention than good. And uh, Andrew Tate's just calling them out on it. If you got value from this reaction, please hit subscribe and hit like. Let us know what your thoughts and feedback is in the comment section below. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.